Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and Jeff, welcome. Nah, 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 that wasn't funny, guys. Nah, I'm gonna start it again. I'm gonna start it again. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 130 something of the Spears Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Uh, I'm still on tour at the moment. Uh, I'm recording this one on a Sunday and, uh, what, what time is it? it? Like 5 p.m. on a Sunday? Well, so I'll get it up on time, all right? Because it's speared Sundays, all right? Not speared Sundays, you fucking cunts. All right, uh, I'm on tour. Where am I? I'm in Sydney. Uh, we got two more days in Sydney. I've got tonight and then all of tomorrow as well. And we're leaving on Tuesday morning. We have to get up at fucking 4 a.m., man. Dude, it's going to suck. So we worked out that it's cheaper uh, for me, because I'm doing a Wollongong show on Monday night, right? So it's cheaper instead of flying, uh, I don't know, around. Instead of staying in Wollongong, sorry, what we're going to do is we're going to load everyone into the fucking hire car. We drive to Wollongong, we do the show, meet everyone afterwards, sign all the stuff, uh, and then come back and stay in Sydney again. And then tomorrow we've got to get up at fucking 4 a.m. in the morning. Which is going to be crazy. So I think we have to pack our bags tonight. No, tomorrow night. But, yeah, I don't know. Probably not going to happen. <laughs> Knowing me. I'm always fucking packing the night before. And then waking up at... You know, going to sleep at 2am. And then waking up at 6am. And then going, hey, why am I tired? You, why are you tired, man? Because you're a fucking idiot. That's why. Hope you guys are having a good week, though. I uh, wanted to thank everyone who came out to the shows. Uh, the two Sydney shows were amazing. Uh, what else have I done? I did Newcastle. That was fucking cool. Uh, and a big thank you to Isaac Butterfield and Andrew Milos, Milos, not too sure how you say his second name, uh, for coming out and opening up the uh, Newcastle show with surprise guests. I really like bringing out surprise guests. Uh, I've been doing it all too long. We've had Lachlan Fairbairn now. We've had... Uh, uh, Isaac Butterfield in Newcastle. We almost had Neil Cole Hatcar in Sydney, but uh, he had another gig, so he couldn't come down. But we had a nice chat anyway. Got to hang out and have lunch. Uh, so that was cool. And uh, Monday, I've got a couple of special guests. I mean, Monday. Melbourne, I have a couple of special guests coming as well. So that'll be cool. Uh, the tour is almost over. It's just Wollongong tomorrow night. And then uh, Melbourne, we got two shows on November 2nd and 3rd. Uh, and... Only one of those dates has tickets left, and it's not very many. So come to Melbourne if you want to come. I'm doing the Comics Lounge. It's going to be fucking cool because, I don't know, it's like a little full circle moment. The Comics Lounge is where I did my first ever comedy set ever. Uh, and they've always been big believers in, in what I do. And finally, I can come back and sell out two shows there. So that's amazing. Well, I haven't sold out two shows yet. Hopefully, I will. It's, it's looking like it will. So uh, loosefears.com slash gigs. And thanks to everyone who's been coming out. It's been amazing, man, all the feedback and everything, and I'm, I'm totally, I'm in such a good space, man. I'm finally doing, like, uh, crowd work for a long time, because crowd work was always my weak spot. Like, if you saw my first, really my first two shows, and, and, and a little bit the same issue with my third show is, I just, I've always been, writing jokes has always been my strong point. I could always write really good bits so I was always like, ah, I have the show, so I won't, I don't need to go and do crowd work. So I would never do it. So I would never like jump out of my comfort zone and dive in. Uh, and then on, on my third tour, I was like, ah, I'm going to, I need to work on crowd work because I don't do it at all. Uh, and then I did it, but I would only do like, I would have like little tiny interactions. Like someone would yell out something and then I would wreck them and then I would move on. And I would, if I noticed someone doing something in the crowd, I'd ignore it. I just wouldn't. I don't know, I wouldn't actively chase crowd work. But now on this tour, man, I'm fucking really, really doing it. Like I've been performing for... The, the, my material, if I do all of my material, goes for an hour. But every single show, pretty much, I've been doing at least an hour 20. So it's about 20 minutes of just spontaneous crowd work that's only for, for that show, which I fucking love. Uh, and uh, man, in Newcastle, it was so fucking funny. We had this... Uh, we had this older couple who, because I was I was performing in like uh, what was it? it was some some theatre uh, that was really well known in Newcastle, right? They had they had uh, they they had like a giant fifteen hundred seat theatre. I wasn't doing that one. I was doing like the one eighty two hundred. I can't remember how big it was. Uh, so obviously that it was like really well known by the theatre. So and this this old couple, to, a sixty year old man and woman, came to the show because they heard about it on the website. And the dude had this fucking laugh. I'm probably going to put the video up so I won't like ruin it. But he had this 
fucking ridiculous laugh. And, you know, my crowd, I was like, oh, you know, who's your kids? Because my crowd is generally like people my age, 20 something, but sometimes there's some young people with parents. So I'm like, oh, who's your, whose parents are you? And they were like, oh, no one. We just came off the theater website. And they were, it was so cool, man. They were fucking loving it. Like, imagine being 60 years old. You rock up to some show with a bunch of weird cunts bringing fucking pairs for some idiot to sign. And he gets on stage and goes, yeah, cunt. And they loved it. So, and I think that's, that, that really means the show's good. If two 60 year old people who are not fans, who just came on a whim, fucking really enjoyed it, then, then the show must be something. So I'm, I don't know, I feel really good. I feel like I've gotten a lot better at comedy on this tour. And, and so is Greeley, the opening act. He's fucking killing it. But man, speaking of Greeley, I don't think, I don't think I've ever met a more social person in my fucking life. He talks to everyone and he has so many friends. I don't, we paid extra money to get him a bed and an accommodation on this tour. I think in Sydney, this is the only time he's actually slept at the fucking Airbnb. No shit, we've done what, 5th, 12, 4, 12 to 14 different cities. He hasn't stayed at our Airbnb once until Newcastle and Sydney. He was just hanging out with mates. One time he bumped into a fucking couple at a bar and he just stayed at their house. Probably put the guy's wife on the spit. <laughs> I don't know that. I'm sure that didn't happen. He's, he's too nice to do that. But yeah, I, I don't know how the fuck he does it. He's always like, oh, I'm just going to hang out with a couple of mates. I'm like, how do you have that many mates? I've got two friends, right? Two friends. That's all I need. I've got two friends and I hardly ever see them. That's all. <laughs> um, I don't know. My, my fucking friendships are weird, dude. I just, I just have like... I've got like one or two friends in every city and then I see them all like once a year. Like in, like, you know, when we up in Sydney, I hung out with Forte, he came to the show, his rapper, uh, hung out with Rakes as well. And, uh, but then I just won't, I, I know now for sure, I'm not going to see him for a fucking year, but both of us will be like, ah, oh, bloody bloody good friends we are but we're really we're, we're not we're just we never see each other but both of us are like yeah fucking sick cunt you're my mate Luke always makes fun of me I'm friends with people who I never see <laughs> but hey man it's the best it's the best of both both worlds dude I got friends and I don't have to do anything ever I'm so psyched for that man that's what I want to do after this tour is I want to do fucking nothing uh, I really just want to get the YouTube shit back up and running. So I think when I finish this tour on November 3rd, I think is the final show. I'm just going to take a week off uh, and get everything in order, have a bit of fun, hang out with my girl, and then uh, and then just get straight back to it and smash out the content. I think next year is going to be really fucking good for all my YouTube stuff because i got no big project. What's been happening on tour though, man? Let me, let me bring, up my little, bring up my notes too. <laughs> we went through fucking Byron Bay. So we... We had to go from, I can't remember where we are going from. I, you, why would I remember, right? It's my, it's my tour. Why the fuck would I know what cities I'm going to, right? We, anyway, so we're driving from, from one place to Newcastle and we had to go through Byron Bay. If you don't know Byron Bay, uh, uh, imagine like a beach town, but everyone's a hipster who's pretending to be homeless. Like every, Byron Bay is the fucking weirdest place ever. It's like a bunch of rich white people walking around the street dressing like homeless people. No one wears shoes. I don't think I saw a single person in fucking shoes, man. It's just a bunch of like, and they're all really hot. They're all like fucking gorgeous people. I was there losing my mind at every fucking girl until I saw the armpit hair. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, I love you. Holy fuck, look at that. That's, you got more than me. And then, you know, Brie, our photographer, was losing her mind with all of the dudes. It's like all these fucking surfer dudes walk around with dreads and they're all jacked and tan. She's like, she, she downloaded Tinder while we we're in the fucking town. And then she looked at her messages and immediately deleted it <laughs> again. Fuck, I don't, I, I don't know how, I don't know why women have Tinder, man. She showed me some of the messages she gets and, and like, I would say 70 to 80% of them are just fucking complete garbage. Hey, dudes on Tinder. Hey, dudes on Tinder, no one wants to fuck you. <laughs> no one, no, you know what? I, I, just, I don't know how you can strike out on Tinder, right? But you, but there are dudes that fucking can. 
Because if you're on Tinder and you match with a girl, the interaction has started off with her saying, I think you're hot and you agree, right? You think each other are hot. That's what Tinder is. I don't know how the fuck you can mess that up, right? A girl has literally gone, I think you're physically attractive, and guys still find a way to be fucking gross about it. Ah, you match me on Tinder. I bet you want to see my cock, you whore. Literally, she was getting messages like that. Like, ah, you want to fuck? It's like, all you have to do, man, is just say hello and ask them a question. That's it. Don't do the fucking shithouse overplayed pickup line that's about their name. Because that sucks. And every girl has heard it before. If she has a unique name, she's heard every single pun about it. Alright? If I had Tinder and a girl matched with me and she was like, Oh, you're tall. Do you play basketball? I would fucking unmatch her, delete Tinder and jump on Grinder. I'd be like, fuck that. <laughs> Dude, is there Tinder for threesomes yet? Surely there must be. I once knew a couple who had like a, who had a, a, a joint Tinder, like, and it had pictures of both of them, and they were like, we just want a fucking girl. Do they have that? Surely they do. Let me Google it. Tinder or threesomes. My first date on the new Tinder for threesome. Threesomes. Where are we? Oh man, this is one of those fucking articles written by a woman who, who's just like, never found a man. And she's just decided to write six paragraphs on getting used sexually and pretending that it's empowering. Do you know those, those are, that's a fucking genre, man. That's one of the biggest genres in journalism. Is just like desperate single late 30s women who are trying to justify them getting used by other people and say, no, I'm being empowering. And then you read the article and it's just about them getting like used by some fucking douchebag and then thrown away. It's like, I don't know. A lot of people trying to pretend that being, oh, check out the fucking front fringe on this chick. Dude, the longer I am single, the stronger my promiscuous side gets. With every bad date I have, I feel like my desire for an emotional connection with a lover lowers, lowers and lowers. Maybe I've come to the age or realization where my allotment of fucks to give has significantly decreased. Maybe I'm jaded. Nah, man. Maybe you're just fucking shit at picking partners. Maybe that's your fucking problem. Or maybe you've got a shit personality. That, the, the amount of fucking entitlement in that one sentence... Maybe I've just come to that age where my allotment of fucks to give has significantly decreased. Okay, cool. So that's how you start the date, is it? You rock up to the date and you're like, I don't give a fuck. You have to impress me. <laughs> I've fucked 60 dudes in the last 20 days. you got to work hard to win this prize. <laughs> it's like the fucking entitlement of some chicks is insane. Right? Whatever the reason, I feel less inclined to invest in someone emotionally at the moment. My search for a life partner has, has been abandoned for the time being. It's like, you would be the worst. It's like, you know this chick. If you went on a date with her, you'd be like, so what do you do uh, in your spare time? She'd be like, um... Oh, I don't really, I don't, I don't really have any hobbies. Like, you know, she's the most boring bitch on the fucking planet. She's like, oh, why doesn't anybody like me? Because you're boring and you have nothing to say. So you're just like, oh. <laughs> it's like fucking Principal Skinner. <laughs> I couldn't be wrong. It must be the children. It's like, dude, I'm not a shit root. It must be the men. Oh no, I'm sure she's an amazing root. My mistake. I'm not a shit partner. It must be all of the men. It's like, nah, dude. You're just shit at conversations. These needs are hard to fulfill on Tinder. So I downloaded the ultimate hookup app, Field. Field? F-E-E-L-D. 
Field makes finding players for bedtime play that much easier. It's the next level of online hookup ad for open-minded singles and couples ready to satisfy their sexual appetite with threesomes, kinks, and new erotic adventures. Is this an ad? Is this a fucking ad? And I'm getting angry at a fucking woman that doesn't even exist? Where are we? All right. I want to... The end game. Here we go. Blah, blah, blah. Front fringe. Whatever. We didn't go home later that night, but we've set the date for next week. This time, no chat. It'll be sex. Oh, I, well, well, that's a fucking shit article. Nothing happened, man. You went on an app dedicated to having sex with someone. You complained about not being able to find a boyfriend. And then you didn't even put out when you met up with the person that you met up with because you met him on a fucking app to have sex with. All right? So there's your problem, bitch. You're putting out false advertising and then getting frustrated when people want what you said you give them and then you backed out. It's like, it's like, oh, I'm going to download an app and the app is specifically like, this is for fucking. And then you match with someone and you're like, hey, let's fuck. And then you don't. And then you're like, bah, bloody fucking. <laughs> I'm being a cunt. I'm being a cunt. You don't know us anything. You don't know us anything. And it, it, it's always fine. Okay. Anyone can do anything. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so fucked. There's, there's an app for fucking everything. I bet. All right, so there's, there's, there's Tinder for like, you know, relationships and casual sex. And now there's Tinder, there's threesome Tinder. There's Grinder for dudes. There's, um, is there anal Tinder? Anal Tinder. I don't know, that just, that just came up with Pornhub. Tinder anal porn videos. Tinder for anal sex. Guys, I think we found a niche in the market. There's no Tinder for anal sex. What what would it be called though, right? So Grinder is for dudes, so that's taken Tinder. Then there's Bumble, which actually Bumble would be a fucking great name for for anal Tinder. Bumble, that's great. What have we got? Ah, oh, here we go. Sphincty. <laughs> Sphincty. That's what it is, right? That's Tinder for anal sex. Sphincty. I'm going to fucking set up that app right now. I'm going to be the next Elon Musk, right? That's me. I'm going to be the next Elon Musk, right? The guy who invented Snapchat is now married to Serena Williams. If I invent Sphincty, I mean, fuck it. I'm going to marry Hugh Jackman. All right? That's the new app. And it only comes out on Apple phones because fuck Android, huh? There you go. None of you Android cunts are going to have an anal sex. You'll be like, oh, I don't need to have anal sex. My camera's better. Except for when you use it natively on any social media app like everybody does, like Instagram and Snapchat. But, you know, it's got a good camera. The specs on paper are good. It doesn't matter if it doesn't work in fucking practicality or reality. Oh, I wish I could download Sphincty. <laughs> Sphincty. What, does Tinder have a catchphrase? Tinder slogan. Because if they have a slogan, I need a fucking slogan, right? Ah, uh, no, they don't have a slogan. Oh, it starts here. Tinder, it starts here. Hmm, does Bumble have a slogan? Bumble slogan. Bumble, where, what do they have, all right? Some things are just meant to be, as in B-E-E. -E. Right. Does Grinder have a slogan? This is probably more relevant to anal sex. This will give me more in in inspiration. Grinder slogan. Oh, I accidentally wrote Slopkin. Ugh, that's I accidentally wrote Slopkin again because I was saying Slopkin while I was trying to write slogan. Grinder slogan. It's time to play nice. Right. Well, that doesn't really help me with the Sphincty slogan. Hmm. Oh, I've got it. Okay. Sphincty. It won't be shitty. 
Because <laughs> everyone has time to prepare because they know what they're in store, in for. You don't need, you don't want spontaneous anal sex, man. That's some shitty stuff. <laughs> Sphincter. I'm gonna be a millionaire. Right. What else are we talking about here? Where's my note? Um. Oh fuck, man. This. Speaking about Android phones. Did you guys see the, the video? I put up the, the, the clip, a podcast clip of me yelling about Android phones and how they can't take selfies on Instagram stories and Snapchat stories because they look like potatoes. I put that up on my Facebook page. It got like 10,000 views, which is fucking awesome for a podcast clip. That's really cool. I'm, I think I'm going to do more of them uh, on there now that I'm, once I get back and I'm properly working with the editor and everything. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, that was just me. I'm, uh, but dude, the fucking comments are crazy. It's hilarious. All these butthurt Android fucking nerds yelling about how I'm incorrect, but also not addressing my point. Like, my point was, it doesn't matter if the camera on paper has better specs. Instagram and Snapchat doesn't talk to the fucking software that Android uses, so it doesn't matter if the hardware, the physical parts are better, the software, the programming, doesn't talk to Instagram and Snapchat. So when you take a photo, it comes out in shitty quality, even if the camera actually is better. And that's why Apple's better for social media, which is what a phones are for. If you don't... Hey, Android. Hey. Hey, Android users. If you really don't give a fuck about selfies and social media, why don't you get a Blackberry or a fucking flip phone, huh? Why don't you go back to the 90s when you just text? Hmm? Huh? Why don't you do that? Oh, but my Android phone comes with a stylus. Ah, oh, yeah? Stick it up your ass and make that your profile picture on Sphincty. Oh, wait. Sphincty doesn't come out on Android. <laughs> it's only for Apple. All oh, but man, I fucking loved it. Guys, seriously, do yourself a favor. Go on my Facebook page and find that Android video. It's Lewis Spears on Android phones. And just reply to all of the angry comments. Don't even, don't even fight back. Just say, hey, take a selfie. <laughs> because it's so fucking funny. They got no argument. They have nothing to come back with. Is hey, take a selfie. Some guy wrote up three paragraphs and then one dude just wrote, hey man, what the fuck's up with your profile picture? And I looked at it. It was the blurriest shit ever. I fucking died. It was so funny. And then that one comment had like three times as many likes as this dude's six paragraphs. Fucking hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, all of these. I'm just scrolling through the comments. Where's a good one? Um, where are we? Thank God I don't consider the camera quality before buying a phone. Your camera is useless if your processor is shit. Oh, really, bro? The, that's what you look at? That, is that what you look at when you want to buy a phone? The processor? Really? Huh? Who the fuck looks at the processor? What do you want a processor for, man? Huh? What are you, are you doing? Are you processing shit? Hmm? You playing a lot of phone games, are you? Hey, man. Get a Nintendo DS. Buy an Xbox. That's what I'm saying. Like, all of the features that are advertised by Android are fucking useless because at the end of the day, it's a phone doing it. You know what I mean? Like, all of these fucking shit-ass features. Like, oh, it comes with a stylus. Hey, bro, I could buy a pencil and draw on paper. Or I could get a fucking uh, animating digital art pad. That does the job better than your fucking... What do you want a stylus for? And I had an Android phone with a fucking stylus. And when I bought it, I was like, Oh, I've got a stylus. I can pull that out of the phone and start tapping away. I can draw things with my stylus. You know what I did with it? I used it three times and then I lost it. And it, I didn't give a fuck. And I had a replacement one. And the only reason I put the replacement one in was to, to so I didn't have that hole. And then I never pulled the stylus out again. It was like Excalibur with Down Syndrome. No one wanted to pull that shit out. If you pull out Excalibur, right? <laughs> if you pull out Excalibur, you become King of England. But if you pull a stylus out of an Android phone, everyone just spits on you and calls you a fucking dickhead. 
I'm using a stylus on your fucking on like it looks it looks like 21st century knitting, right? Every, as soon as everyone sees it, they just want to fucking bully the shit out of you. Although actually, one time I saw a girl knitting on the train, and I thought it was the coolest shit ever. I almost leant over and was like, "Can you make me some socks? Do you have a long trip ahead of you? If you if you can finish my socks by the by the time I get off my stop, I'll fucking give you fifty bucks." Could you imagine that? Fucking train socks. I'd love a pair of train socks, man. That could be a new hustle, dude. Maybe that's my new hustle. Fuck Sphincty. Actually, fuck by using Sphincty. <laughs> I reckon I'm just going to get in the train sock hustle, right? Get on the train and be like, you get on at the city and then you go, all right, who's getting off at Frankston? Which is like an hour trip and put their hand up and you go, who needs a pair of socks? And then all of them go, oh, I can't even afford shoes, bras. I live in Frankston. I can't buy socks. Yeah, I'll th- I think I'll stick with Sphincty. I'll make way more money with that. <laughs> but yeah, it's so funny. Man, you know what I saw? I saw an ad that made me so fucking mad, as usual, because everything makes me mad. I saw an ad for the new Huawei... Who, who are, who are, what the fuck is that fucking... That Chinese phone that spies on you? Huawei. Huawei? Is that how you say it? H-U-A-W-E-I. $300 phone. How do you say that? How do you say Huawei? H-U-A-W-E-I. Huawei? 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 How do you say... How do you pronounce Huawei? <laughs> Ah, oh, fucking ad for chocolate. Oh my god. There's a glass and a half in everywhere. Oh, oh, there's a glass and a half in Cadbury milk chocolate. Well, fuck, it's healthy then, isn't it? Never mind the 600 bags of sugar it's got in there. Fuck my teeth. It's got a milk in there. Huawei. Huawei? Huawei. What? For those of you who don't know what Huawei is, it's the largest telecommunications equipment maker in the world. Yeah, shut up, bro. Just tell, just tell, hey, that was a minute long video and you finished it in three seconds, alright? I'm not going to listen to the rest, alright? All I want is the pronunciation of Huawei. I don't need a minute long version about how they're the largest manufacturer of telecommunication parts. Shut your fucking face and fuck your asshole on Sphincty, alright? Except you don't get Sphincty on Huawei. Shut up, dude. That's, that's going to be the worst, that's going to be the worst thing to do in the world is starting up, like, filming a video and going, how to do this? Like those tutorial videos. How to set up your Xbox. And all it is, all it should be is a 45 second video of you plug this in here, you plug that in there, you plug this in there, and you turn the Xbox on. I don't know why it's in song, but it can be in song, right? That's all it has to be. But then... Instead of it being a 45 second video of how to plug in your Xbox, it's a 16 minute video about how that fucking idiot's feeling. Hey guys, welcome to the video of how to uh, plug in your Xbox. Uh, I am going to tell you how to plug in the Xbox, but before I do that, I want to address the reason why I haven't been uploading many videos very recently. See, the problem all started between my parents. They broke up. 15 years ago, and that's given me abandonment issues, so I really struggled to commit to uploading frequently, and it's a very deep issue in myself, and I'm trying to work it out with my therapist, and meanwhile, you're watching the fucking video going, show me how to plug in the fucking Xbox, and he goes, it all started probably when I broke up with my girlfriend, and we were having a rough time. Anyway, so step one with your Xbox, but before I tell you that, I want to talk to you about my dog. He died recently. Plug it in, you fucking idiot! That, doing that shit, having those long tutorial videos, full of like, that are like 90% personal info, and 10% what you actually came there to watch and learn, I gotta say, man, Worse than the Holocaust. Easy. <laughs> Fuck, man. 
You got that, like that. That you need a Nuremberg trial for every fucking cunt who does that shit. What's they talking about? Oh yeah, Huawei, right? I saw this fucking ad for these Android phones, and it's it's. Oh my god. <laughs> Here's the thing. This is why the Apple phone is and pretty much always will be fucking better than any Android phone, and it's because. When Apple makes an ad about their phone, all they talk about is their phone, right? They go, our phone does this, it looks like that, and now it can do this. Also, if you want to turn your head into an emoji for no fucking reason at all, you can do that. Because, hey, we're running out of ideas here, we've added all the features you need, we've got a great camera, and it looks great. So, fucking emoji heads. What do you think about that? You can, talk, you can turn yourself into a talking poo. That's going to be worth at least a $500 increase in price, right? At least they talk about their own features. Every fucking Android app ad that you see is like, Ah, uh, Apple phones aren't good. Yeah, you should buy this instead. Ah, the Apple bloody phone. You, you, need, a, you need a bloody fucking dongle if you want to plug your headphones in. And uh, we're going to ignore the fact that wireless headphones exist for pretty much the same price as wired headphones for the minute, but, you know, if you want to fucking live in 2009, you can't, you can't live in, buy an Android phone, we don't have Spinkty, but we do have headphone jacks, <laughs> <laughs> but that's all that adds up, right, I saw this fucking Huawei ad, and it was playing silent, but it still made me mad, it ruined my day, I was walking down Pitt Street, looking for a comic shop in Sydney, and this giant fucking video billboard ad, and uh, it was like a, a dude with an iPhone, and he had, he was on low battery, and he was like, oh no, I'm on low battery. And he looks around, there's nowhere to plug his charger in, he goes, oh no, and then the phone died. He goes, no, I should never have bought a superior device, because sometimes it will die and run out of battery. And, and that's Apple's fault, not my fault for not charging the phone. No, buy a Huawei, we spy on your kids. And then, and then the fucking, the cunt with the Huawei rocks up and he's like, yeah, check me out. I've got a fucking Huawei. What's up, ladies? And then he gets out his three-inch penis and he goes, yeah, I would take a dick pic, but it'd be pixelated. Huawei. I wish I had Sphincty. <laughs> right? So this guy rocks up with the Huawei and, and he's running low on battery, right? So fuck, what's he going to do? There's, no, there's nowhere to plug his phone. The guy with the iPhone... His phone died, so what's Huawei man gonna do, right? So then Huawei man, he's there, he's like, oh, I gotta charge my bloody phone. And then out of nowhere, a beautiful Huawei woman rocks up and she's got her Huawei. And she's like, yeah, look at me, I've got a Huawei. Check me out. I mean, I don't have Sphincty, but I do have a Huawei. And one of my tits is three times bigger than the other. But that's all right, you can't tell because my photos are all pixelated. Huawei! And I'm pretty glad that I didn't have Sphincty because that means I've got no excuse to turn down anal sex. <laughs> right? So the fucking, the Huawei woman walks up and she's got a fully charged Huawei. And I was like, Huawei, what the fuck? <laughs> Huawei, what the fuck? Right? And I was like, what's going to happen here? She's got a fully charged Huawei. He's got an almost dead Huawei. And, and God, I shit you not. This feature was their selling point. This is why you should get a fucking Huawei, right? So they're standing, and all you can see is their hands, and they're both holding their Huaweis. One's fully, one's fully charged, one's almost dead, and the Huawei's in slow motion with the sun in the background, so there's like sun, it's like this real godly moment. You know that fucking painting where God's fingering the dude's hand? It was like that shit, right? And they just bring the two Huaweis together, and they touch... And then the one that's almost dead starts to charge. And then text goes on the screen. Wireless, phone-to-phone, -phone, Huawei charging. That has got to be the shittest fucking feature of any Android phone in existence. Huawei, what the fuck were you thinking, huh? Is that the best idea you had? It's like... Uh... Uh, uh, we don't have any fucking new ideas, but 
in the extremely rare scenario where your Huawei is almost flat and you happen to be hanging out with a friend who also has a Huawei and that friend has a fully charged Huawei, if you can convince your friend with a Huawei to give your his Huawei to you and you can push them together, you can charge your Huawei and deplete his fucking battery for no reason because you've been an idiot that didn't charge his phone. That's why you should buy a Huawei. Hey, Huawei. Huawei, fuck you. Couldn't even think of anything funny to say there. But just know, I gave it a go. <laughs> really? Could you imagine how fucking inconvenient that is? I have a wireless charger at home, and it's great. Because when I go to bed, I just grab my phone, chuck it on the charger, go to sleep. I don't have to plug it in, I have to do anything. But... If I'm like at home and I want to use my phone, I have to pick it up off the charger and then it stops charging. There's no cord, right? You pick it up off and then it stops charging. And that's great for me at home because it makes me use my phone less. Because I know if I pick it up, it'll go off charge and then I'll just have to put it back down. It's annoying, right? But it, if that was the only way to charge it out in the wild, what you would have to do is not only fucking ruin your mate's day because he's got a fully charged phone and you're the fucking dickhead with the almost flat Huawei. You need to be like, oh, hey, Huawei brother, can you help Can you help out a Huawei? And he, he has to give you his phone and then you have to put the phones back to back and hold them there like that for fucking, I don't know, at least half an hour for you to get like 20... 30-40% on your phone and then he's going to be down from 70 to fucking 20 and then you're both fucked then you both have a couple hours left and he's being punished for no reason and he couldn't use his phone for a fucking I mean what are you going to do? Are you going to hold them together the whole time with your hands? Are you going to do that? That's your feature what, or what are you going to do? Are you going to put it both of, both of your phones in one person's pocket and then it's going to get really hot and burn a hole through your leg. And then you'll get admitted to hospital. And the doctor will be like, ah, yes, I've seen this before. This is the Huawei burn. Charge your phone, fuckhead. Oh, but it's only, it's only, it's only $400, the new Huawei. So, you bloody, you bloody Apple sheep, you've been, you've been tricked. You've been tricked into spending too much money on a phone. I, I'm the superior Huawei master race. I can charge my phone wirelessly in the extremely specific circumstance where not only does my friend have a Huawei, but he also has a fully charged Huawei. And he's also okay with taking his fully charged Huawei down to 30% just so he can charge my Huawei. And he's not allowed to use his phone. In fact, I have to put his phone into my pocket uh, and, and keep it there for at least 40 minutes. And he's not allowed to use it. And and he'll also have to stay around me the whole time. And you know for sure anybody who owns a 2018 version of the Huawei phone is very shit at conversation. So it's just a two a, a couple of a couple of Huawei fucking retards hanging out talking to each other, not using their Huawei's. So that's gonna be the most fucking awkward <laughs> That's going to be the most awkward fucking thing on the fucking planet. A couple of Huawei whack jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. I'm going to get all the comments. Uh, I've got a Huawei and I used wireless charging once and it was really good. Are oh, you, yeah, bro? Hey, man, when you send that fucking angry email, why don't you attach a selfie that you took on a Snapchat camera? Oh, wait, you wouldn't do that because you look like you're on fucking Roblox. I've got an Android phone. I love it. I look like a fucking square. I love it. Wireless charging on my Huawei by using my mate's Huawei. I'm not going to do the whole song, guys. I'm sorry. Actually, you're welcome. <laughs> Man, dude, I, I, w I went to Coles. 
because I'm trying to not spend money on tour because my last three tours I would just spend money like a fucking idiot like yeah hey, I'm on tour if I spend money here I'll make it straight back oh I'll finish my tour where's all my money gone <laughs> so I've actually I've, I've kept to a very strict budget this tour and I've been doing very well um and I'll just buy the one dumb thing after the tour and then I'll live like a fucking peasant hopefully I put myself back up to jacket money. That's the goal, man. I'm going to ask my boss for a wage, but you know it depends how uh, how my employee is being doing because uh, I need to do a little performance review as the boss. I need to make sure that uh, he's been doing a good job. But uh, you know, as the employee, I hope I've been doing a good job, and the boss gives me a raise. But we'll see, right? We'll see. I I mean, I'm not the boss. I mean, I am the boss, but we'll, it depends on my employee. We went to Coles, right, to buy food uh, for the week so we don't eat take. But that, that, dude, you spend so much money just buying food out, hey. Like it's, and it really, really adds up. It's fucking crazy. If you don't watch yourself, if you just go, hey, I'm just going to go out to eat here, I'm going to breakfast here, I'm going to fucking have lunch there, I've dinner here. It's like you, you're fucked and it's so easy to do, especially on tour. Because you, you don't want to cook, you know? You, like, you don't know where the supermarkets are. You don't have a car most of the time. So if you go to the supermarket, you're going to carry it all the way back or get an Uber back. It's a fucking hassle, right? But um, it ends up being so much fucking cheaper. So I'm just going to make pasta tonight instead of going out. Oh, fuck, it's hot, man. I want to take my shirt off, but I'm not going to do that to you guys. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we went to Coles, right? Me and Grilly we went to Coles. And uh, walking around, and this dude comes up to me and he's wearing like a, sh a button up shirt and he's got a clipboard and I was like oh it must be an office worker like off the job or whatever and he and he comes up to me and he's like uh he's like a salesman he was like a salesman for a charity in Coles and he comes up to me and he starts like pitching me and Greeley in the supermarket and I'm standing there being like what, what the fuck's going on like isn't this illegal you can't like you can't run a business inside someone else's business, right? That'd be fucking... We were all, when I did door-to-door -door sales shit when I was fucking 18, they always told us you can't go into stores and sell people. Like, you can't go into a store and try and take money from their customers. That's fucking... Fuck off, man. But anyway, this, this dude, he's like for some charity about missing kids or like orphans or some some fucking heartstring bullshit, right? And you know, you fucking know that those that money doesn't make it to the kids, huh? Like that white ribbon domestic violence charity, 3% of the money actually goes to shelters, to women, to children. Actually, the rest of it is just like admin and marketing fees, paying for the fucking CEO to whack off and be like, hey, I'm a good person, I'm the CEO of a charity, but I'll pay myself fucking... Heaps of money every year. Fuck you, you cunt. I hate that shit. I don't know for sure, but I believe the pink ribbon cancer research is similar. Where they just spend shitloads of money on marketing and admin and office staff and none of the money goes to any women's tits. You know what? That'd be a great charity. Fucking breast implants for women who've had, um... Is it mastectomies? Where they cut their tits off. Angelina Jolie had it done then she got like some new tits put in I reckon that's a fucking cool charity right that's what I'm going to do with all the money I make from Sphincter I'm just going to buy women tits <laughs> but only if you have no tits alright from cancer if you have no tits from genetics sorry you're fucked pay for it yourself it's only 7 grand get it on afterpay <laughs> um, so yeah Coles right the, the fucking salesman he comes up and he starts pitching me and Greeley about some charity I wasn't really listening but then uh, I couldn't work out if he was a fan or fucking weird because he made a, he came up to me and was like, hey man, how you going? Um, oh, this is so weird. You know, you, you're probably like, you probably get this all the time. I don't know, like he did that whole thing like nervous fan thing, which is fine. I don't mind if people are nervous, right? That's cool. I mean, you shouldn't be nervous. I'm just a fucking person. But if you are, I get it, right? I've, I've been that nervous person. But he's like, oh... I'm, I'm just for, and then he starts talking about this charity. I'm, I'm like, uh, talking for this, for this charity and, and like, I'm, I'm here and, and, oh, you, you probably want me to get to the point, right? And I was like, yes. <laughs> oh no, before that, no, I wasn't a cunt until he was like, oh, you know, you probably get this all the time. This is what made me think, oh, he must be a fan. He goes, oh, you probably get this all the time, but do you play basketball? And like, he really said it like that. He's like, oh, you probably get, uh, but. Do you play basketball? And I just did what I do every time. 
someone asks me that question and I give them nothing. Nah, man, I don't. And then I say nothing. <laughs> because you know what? Guys, everyone listening at home, even if you're a fan and you've heard me talk about it on the podcast and you saw that video I did about me saying, no, I don't play basketball, stop asking me. If you're the person who thought, ah, oh, you know it would be funny? You know it would be funny? If I asked Lewis if he plays basketball, I bet he'll say something funny. I won't. <laughs> I'll just say nah. And then I'll look at you. And you will feel awkward. And I'll feel a little bit annoyed. And then you'll regret it. <laughs> because it's fucking awkward. And I did that shit to this dude, right? Stone face. Do you play basketball? Nah, man. Silence. That's it. That's all you get. And then this guy, he was like, oh. Oh, you probably... You know, you probably, um, you, you probably want me to get to the point. And I just went, yeah, man, I do. Because <laughs> I couldn't work out if he was a fan or a salesperson. He, I think he was both, right? And then he starts, like, pitching me in the fucking, in the supermarket, right? About this, this charity that, about girls that are, or children that have been abducted or kids. Something to do with kids. And then Greeley pipes up. He... He senses that this is fucking shit. I wasn't going to give the cunt any money, alright? Hey, if you're a salesperson and you're a fan, say hello, alright? That's fine. Say hi. I like your stuff. Grab a photo. I'll say, I'll shake your hand. I'll go, hey man, what's your name? Thanks so much, dude. Appreciate it. But then, after that's done, if you try and sell me, fuck off! No, alright? I'd rather wirelessly charge my Huawei with some other fucking Huawei whack job, all right? That's what I'd rather do. Just because you like my work doesn't mean I like your work. <laughs> if you're a charity worker and you like my work, oh no, sorry, no, if you're a charity worker, you're amazing. If you actually work for charity, but if you're a charity salesperson, you're not a charity worker because you get paid a wage. You are a salesperson. And you're trying to salesperson the fuck out of me. And I'm not into it. And I used to be that person. I used to be the fucking salesperson for a charity. And the first two weeks, I was like, Oh, I'm a charity worker. I'm helping the earth. And then I realized, oh, no, 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 no. I'm trying to make me money. And I give, I take 30%. And then I give the rest to my boss. He takes 20%. And he gives the rest to the charity. They take 40%. And then they give the rest to the CEO. He takes 10%. And then fucking $2 goes to the actual cause. That's what fucking happens, right? So anyway, I'm talking to this fucking salesperson. And he's like, oh, he starts pitching me about some charity to do with kids. We're from the fucking hippie doobie charity. And we do hippie doobie doobie right? And, uh, and Greeley just goes, oh, he picks up on kids and he goes, oh, you're selling kids. He's like, what? What? He goes, you're selling kids? Because, man, we're looking to buy. Do you have any kids for sale? Just fucking with, just being a big cunt. And Greeley, he's like, he's like, I don't know, six something, big guy, pretty terrifying looking dude. If you don't know that he's a nice person, <laughs> like I do. And just fucking staunches him. Just looks him straight in the eyes. You selling kids, mate? Because we're looking to buy. Do you have any kids? How much? And the guy just goes, Oh, uh, um, uh, uh, and I said, Oh, you're not selling kids? Sorry, man. I'm not interested. Just fucking walked away. Right? And then, and then me and Grilly are talking. We're like, dude, was that guy really trying to sell me something while I'm at, something different while I'm at the supermarket? Like, is that how fucking evil this capitalist charity bullshit has gotten? That they now have salespeople inside fucking supermarkets trying to take more money out of your pocket. And then, I, and then I was like, oh, well, maybe he was just a fan and he panicked and then sold me for 
because he thought it'd be cool to sell me. Sometimes that happens, right? But then I, I watch the dude and he starts like pitching just some mum in the supermarket. She's like looking at fruit. Like literally trying to feed her children. And he's like, oh, dude, can you give me money too? Can you give me some money too? I want to make my commission. And it was so funny, man. She just cracked at him. She was like, she was like, oh, I don't, I, sorry, no, thank you. And he goes, oh, it, it only takes, and she's like, I don't have time. I'm trying to shop. I'm trying to buy fruit. Can you leave me alone? I'm already shopping. Go away. It was the best shit I've ever seen in my life. And while I was watching this happen, apparently Grilly, just to be an even bigger cunt for no reason, went, went and complained to the manager that some salesperson was trying to take people's money and sell to them in the shopping center. And you know what? Fucking fair enough. Like, why the... And, and then I think the salesperson got kicked out. But he was there officially because he had an official Coles sticker visitor on it. So, like, Coles, for some fucking reason, have invited salespeople into their supermarkets so that while you're there trying to buy eggs for your fucking family, some dickhead will be like, Yeah, hey, can you... Can I have some money too? Are you buying eggs? Can I have some of that money also? I would like some of it. It's like, bro, fuck off. Right? Do it on the street. Like every other, every other fucking, I, w I would say self-respecting salesman, but, but you know, none of those fucking backpacks, stinky backpackers want to be there. They don't want to be there. Hey, how you going, man? You having a good day? Sorry, that, this is what you do. This is what you just confuse him, right? Because I've been the salesperson. I was fucking really good at sales. I was the telemarketer. I was the door knocker. I've been that cunt. I've lived that life. It fucking sucks. I don't want to talk to him either. But I'm there trying to get money. Not for the charity, mind you. I didn't give a fuck about that. I was trying to get my commission. You remember that. Every time you see a salesperson on the street, that money's not going to the kid. 30% of that's going to the salesperson. 20% of it's going to his manager. 40% of it's going to his boss. 5, 10% of it goes to the actual fucking charity. None. Give it to an actual shelter. Right? The shelter itself. Not a charity raising money for shelters. The shelter. S fuck the middleman off. Go straight to the fucking person who's actually helping. Alright? Do that shit. Do your research before you give money to fucking people. Don't let some dickhead on the street pressure you into it. Into it. Right? I would say self-respecting salesperson, but they, they, they're, they're not. They don't want to be there, right? This is what you do, right? Instead of saying no. Because the first thing that you learn when you're doing sales is how to turn a no into a yes. Because 90% of the people who you talk to are just going to gonna go, no, I'm busy. I don't have time. No, thank you. But that's when you go, when, when they, so they're prepared to say no, they're not prepared for you to go, Oh, but it'll only take this. Oh, but I like your shoes. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about whatever. Whatever your tactic is, it's always turning that first no into a yes, right? So you don't say no. You don't say I'm busy. You just look at that salesperson right in the face and you go, oh, sorry, I'm gay. And then you keep walking and they go, oh, it just deactivates them because no one's ever said that to them. No one's, I do it all the time. Sorry, I'm gay. And you just see it break their brain because, the, oh, but we serve gay people. Oh, but uh, why, why is, I don't know, gay people, what does that have to do with, I'm just trying to, and by the time they've computed what you just said to them, you're gone, right? Works every time. It just deactivates them. Hey, sir, how are you going? Do you have a minute to chat? Oh, sorry, I'm gay. It just deactivates them. Salesperson error detected. I'm gay. Does not compute. Does not compute. Rebuttal not found. Cannot turn into sale. Shutting down. <laughs> Fuck, man. That's I'm saying, man. Well, that's all you gotta do. Another one, if you're not, if you're not, if you don't have the confidence to say I'm gay, ladies, this won't work for you. If you're a dude, you just say, "Sorry, I'm pregnant." It does not compute. Men cannot be pregnant. Irrelevant to sales scenario. Too late. Boom, shutting down. <laughs> that's how you destroy a salesperson. 
I, I've only ever had one, and this guy must have been, he, I, I bet he's making a million dollars selling cars or houses by now, right? This guy, this was genius. I said that the only time anyone's ever come back straight away from I'm gay, I'm, I'm telling you, I've done this to at least a couple hundred people. I do it all the time, every time. Sorry, I'm gay. Takes no time out of my day, gives me a fucking laugh, makes them go, Abuse, does not compute. Gay people can buy things as well. <laughs> Being homosexual does not impede on capitalism. Abuse. <laughs> Cannot overturn, no rebuttal found. Cannot turn I'm gay into sale. It be you. <laughs> <clears throat> right? That's what you do. Only one time has it... Has, uh, this guy must have been... A, this, this guy must have been a supercomputer, right? He's the, He was the fucking iPhone salesman, right? He was like, Oh, it does compute. I was like, Oh, he's... I can't remember. It was some rainforest thing. And I was like, Oh, uh, sorry, I'm gay. And he goes, That's right. We love everyone. So, I just want to talk to you for a minute. And I was like, Whoa, he fucking got me. Checkmate. I was like, Sorry, I'm gay. He went, it, it, whoop, We serve gay people. That's all right, mate. We love everyone. I was like, fuck, your processor must be onto something here. Maybe that guy from the comment section. Maybe he was the fucking Huawei, right? He was wirelessly charging some other Huawei whack job. All right, guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening. I don't have any questions this week. Sorry about that. Uh, if you have any questions for the podcast next week, send them through to podcast at lewspears.com. I'd love to get them. Uh, that'd be really good. Uh, and if you need any life advice, you have any cool stories, anything you'd like to hear me talk about, send it through to podcast at lewspears.com. I will read all of them, and uh, if I think they're good, I will uh, uh, go through them. So, thank you very much for listening. I'll be back next Sunday. The tour is almost finished. Wollongong is tomorrow, and then I'm going to Melbourne on November 2nd and 3rd. There are only a few tickets left to the second extra added uh, Melbourne show on Saturday, November 3rd. Uh, please do come. I would fucking love you guys to come. That's the final show of the tour. I'd love to sell it out. And that is the last chance anyone will get to see me uh, for the rest of the year until next September. That's when I'm planning my next tour. So it's the, your last chance for about 12 months to see me. The last chance I'll do independent variable ever. So I'd love to see you guys there. Tickets are cheap as fuck. And uh, I meet everybody afterwards. And it's almost sold out. I'd love to feel it. It's the final show of the tour. I'd love to go out with a bang. So, uh, and I've got a couple of special guests lined up too. So you're getting value for money there. All right, guys. Thank you very much for listening. I'll be back next week. Uh, hope you have the shittest one ever. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Uh, being gay does not compute. Cannot complete podcast. <laughs> <laughs>